Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. In this video today guys we are taking a look at the technical analysis for Cardano and specifically the price action on ADA and we have seen a new all-time high hit today but we've also seen a bit of a pullback so we're going to get into what is going on here with ADA and what to expect next. Guys as we get into it if you find it useful and informative hit the like button I really appreciate that. If you are new to the channel then do subscribe tap the bell select all notifications and in doing so you will be kept up to date with everything that goes on here with Cardano. Right, let's uh, let's jump into this weekly chart and talk about what's going on with the bigger time frames to start with. Um, obviously, we have got the five impulse waves. Nothing there has fundamentally changed. If you're new to the channel, then this is Elliot Theory. We are tracking the five impulse waves to the upside. And um, we can obviously see this kick started back in March of 2020. Um, and basically, we peaked out so far uh, the third wave in May of 2021. Significant gains were made on that journey. I'll just quickly highlight those. Um, so I'll just grab that and push that up to the high of three. That's basically 14,500% since March 2020 to May 2021. Okay, and obviously we set new all-time highs today and uh, we have actually been tracking this and um, pushing quite a few all-time highs recently after we got a bit of a catalyst past the 786 of the Fibonacci retracement zone. And the fifth wave has multiple different levels to it and it really does depend on various different elements that are outside of the technical. So a little bit of speculation and a little bit of technical analysis. So to start with, we have the Fibonacci retracement tool with the extension level of the 4.236. This shows us $7.22 as a top for the fifth wave. That being said, it does not know about all these technicals, do not know about smart contracts, does not know about the projects that are building on the ecosystem. It does not know about the Ethiopia and the onboarding of a million people over there. It does not know about the companies that are looking to migrate from Ethereum to the Cardano ecosystem. All of those things potentially could push the price above and beyond that $7.22. Now we've put the fifth wave on $10 as a round number, um, but we have also marked up $15, $20 and $25 as also possible scenarios that could unfold in the future. For the most part of this technical analysis, we're going to lean on the $10, which is usually why we see it in all of our thumbnails. $10 is kind of where I do feel is a nice comfortable level for Cardano to hit. Okay, right, on this weekly chart, now we obviously have an understanding over the five impulse waves to the upside. We also have to acknowledge wave two and wave four. Okay, these are the two correction waves. Um, this uh, correction wave of two actually took us down into the oversold area uh, in the same way that we were when we had that crash in March before the bull run started. Now, those two are oversold areas, and obviously wave four was the same in this oversold area as well. Uh, and again, wave one and three peaked up in the overbought areas okay so again in line with our expectations our stochastic rsi is now up in the overbought area in the same way that we were when we were down here on wave three so when we're all the way down at this point we were actually overbought and we actually tracked this overbought area for quite some time likewise we take a look at where we were in wave one halfway through wave one we were in the overbought area so we know that we can track this for quite some time and be up in the overbought area for pretty much the rest of the peak of the bull run now okay so our weekly chart has corrected nicely from those oversold areas Areas that we were enduring during the fourth wave correction. So if you've been around in ADA for not that long and you've kind of seen, you know, wave three kind of come to a, an end and you've been in a negative position since we've had the correction, you're pretty much in positive now, uh, as long as you obviously haven't sold and succumbed to the fear. If you're buying Cardano all the way down here, you know, less than eight cent like myself, then you obviously, you know, you're just kind of huddling all the way through because you know what's coming, uh, which is fantastic. Now, when we jump down into our daily view, this is where we get the, the next granular view, right? Seven days make up the week. Um, what's what's happening here? Let me just bring this down. So there's a couple of things. Um, we obviously have two trend lines. I'll get into those on the hourly. Let me just take these off of the daily for now uh, because they're a little bit easier to see when we track it on the hourly than the daily. Okay, but we are up against resistance and we breached this resistance today, um, but we have come back down below it. Okay, so we although we set the new all-time high that we've been talking about for a couple of days now, how the charts were lining up for this move, it's had it, but it's also had a lot of selling pressure bringing the price back down below our support. And we'll get into that on the hourly in a moment. Um, so quite frustrating that we went past the resistance only to come back down below it. Um, but on that note, we can see the stochastic is in an over 
oversold area, right? So uh, during this cycle uh, or this fifth wave that we've been pushing to the upside, we noticed that we were overbought very, very quickly. This was sustainable for a period of time, but it was actually over overextended for quite a bit. And what we actually needed to see was this correction come in. Now this correction came in whilst the price was moving up, which is fantastic to see because that means that there's uh, basically less and less people buying, but there was more people buying than there were selling. So overall, you lost the momentum from your stochastic whilst you still actually pushed the price up, which was really cool. And obviously the catalyst for this major change was really going above the 786 area of the Fibonacci retracement tool. Um, so for love it or hate it, Fibonacci uh, retracement tools are very good at predicting where things are going to go. And this is because so many traders use them. Um, so right now there are three, well, well there's usually three really key areas on the Fibonacci retracement tool. 618, 702, and the 786. The 702 is one that you have to add in manually. It's not a part of the standard tool set. But these are the three areas that most of the work actually happens. And what we were talking about for quite some time was how we needed to get inside this yellow box area and get the closed candle above it. And we saw that happen. And once we got that closed candle, things went absolutely nuts and we set the new all-time high. And again, we found ourselves at this resistance point halfway towards our target. Our target comes in on a 1.618 area of the Fibonacci. So this is the first extension level and is $3.30 and we actually found this resistance and we actually were trying to push through it a couple of days I thought we were going to get it over here but instead we had a pullback taking us down into the oversold area even further that being said we had a good run today we got above our resistance but we have pulled back and we'll get into the hourly to see if that's going to get a reversal soon we have a couple of trend lines that we are tracking there and um, so the fact that we're oversold huge potential to push right back to the upside now on the daily chart so things are lining up quite nicely and when we jump down into our hourly view this is where we get that deeper dive on what is going on and what to expect next right so by the time this video goes live things should hopefully start rocking now we can see that we're just below our trend uh, our, so our resistance line um, we're trying to turn into a support line we came down to a good support level just down here at two dollars 90 and we got that reversal pretty quick from there but we could see that there was a lot of sudden pressure coming in and uh, basically it just dragged us down but we are oversold again so again we can start to see this push to the upside now and we can potentially now reclaim this area above our a resistance line and i think the next push is going to take us there i think we're going to go up and we should be tracking inside this area pretty nicely pretty quickly now obviously we have got this trend line to the upside over here at the top and we also have one down here now these are not um you know not, not like parallel trend lines in fact they're getting tighter and tighter and tighter in the same way that we see one on xrp and um, so what we're looking for here is to basically get trapped inside one of these triangular wedges and have a complete break the one that we want to do is we want to breach this resistance trend whilst maintaining our support trend to the upside okay and um, so if we're down here there's a triangular wedge there that will take us up um, but i think we are more than likely going to get trapped inside this triangular wedge and then move up that way again i could be wrong and we could actually just go straight the way through um, pretty quickly as well. Um, so it's interesting that we do have this triangular wedge appearing here. And again, we can track this for quite some time. Uh, it should hopefully end um, by the 7th of September or around there, maybe a little bit longer, maybe the 10th or so. Timing is usually the hardest thing to gauge, guys. It can happen at almost at any point. But the good news is that there is this triangular wedge forming. Um, and that is usually pretty good indication that we should start to see a pretty interesting break. So I'm just going to try to get this a little bit tighter on time frame for you guys. Um, so yeah, the 10th of September, that kind of comes to a point here, right? Um, so this is looking pretty cool and pretty tight. Um, so although we had the breach and we pushed to new all-time highs today, $3.10, uh, the unfortunate event of pulling us back down into this area just means that this is going to take a little bit more before we get that break to the upside. Um, so overall, Cardano has been performing very, very well. Um, it still continues to do well and we're getting tighter and tighter and closer and closer to smart contracts, projects launching on the ecosystem, companies migrating their dApps across from Ethereum to the Cardano ecosystem. A lot of fantastic things are to come. And guys, if you haven't yet checked out the interview that we did with Dr. Ben Gertzel from SingularityNet, he is one of the main projects. SingularityNet is one of the main projects that are going to be launching on the Cardano ecosystem, and they are migrating. Well, I say migrating, they're actually using it in both. They're staying on the Ethereum chain, but they're also building on the Cardano ecosystem. And in that interview that we did with Dr. Ben Gertzel, uh, he talked talks about the um 
the, the differences between the Solidity language and obviously Haskell and why it is better on the Cardano ecosystem than the Ethereum ecosystem. So well worth checking that video out. Guys, if you have found this a brief update on Cardano useful and informative, hit the like button. I really do appreciate that. If you are new to the channel, then do subscribe, tap the bell, select all notifications. And in doing so, you will be kept up to date with absolutely everything that we do here. With this said, done and out of the way, I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll catch you in the next one.